Hey young friends, Dr. Bill here. As always, I am really, really glad that you've chosen to take some time and spend it with me as we talk about some important lessons from Scripture. Because this coming Sunday is Easter, uh, the day in which we celebrate God raising Jesus from the dead. I'm going to take a bit of a pause from our big names in the Bible, and I want to talk about this week, which is known as Holy Week. Holy Week began last Sunday. We call it Palm Sunday. And that's the day Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem with a whole lot of fanfare and celebration by his followers and his friends. You may recall that Scripture says that they spread their cloaks on the road before him and they wave palm branches all of that signifying that they had expectations that Jesus would soon become king. Well, during the rest of the week uh, leading up to his death and his resurrection, Jesus did some other important things. For example, Scripture tells us that on several of those days, he went to the temple and there he engaged in conversation with his enemies, his adversaries. Religious leaders tried to ask him trick questions, hoping that Jesus would give an answer that would uh, help turn the crowd against him and would give them reason to have him put to death. Then when we come to Thursday, what is known in many traditions as Maundy Thursday. Well, on Thursday, Jesus gathered with his disciples and they were going to celebrate Passover together. Passover was the big celebration of the Hebrew people that helped them to remember how God had delivered them from slavery in Egypt. And so Jesus gathered with his disciples to celebrate Passover. And during that time, he uh, told them exactly what was going to happen to him. And using the elements uh, in the Passover celebration, namely bread and wine, Jesus said, uh, just as bread is broken, just as wine is poured out, this is what's going to happen to me. As well, that evening, Jesus gave his disciples a new command. That's why it was called Maundy Thursday. That's from a Latin word, which means commandment. And that new commandment Jesus gave his followers was that we're to love each other as he has loved us. And Jesus demonstrated that kind of love that evening by washing his disciples' feet. Well, later that evening and into the early the next morning, Jesus retreated to the Garden of Gethsemane where he prayed and prayed very honestly and very urgently. He wanted God to allow him to bypass the cross. He said, God, if there's any other way we can accomplish your purpose without me being put to death, please let it be so. But Jesus also said, nevertheless, if this is the only way, then I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Well, later that night and early in the morning, Jesus was arrested and he was tried and convicted. And so on Friday, which we call Good Friday, Jesus was taken to the place where he was crucified and executed. And there he died on the cross. Now, from there, we move to Sunday, which we call Easter Sunday. Uh, that's our big day when we celebrate God's triumph over death and the fact that God raised Jesus from the dead. But here's an interesting tidbit. Between Good Friday and Easter, Easter Sunday, well, there's a day in between, Saturday. And there's not much that happens on Saturday. We don't have any event to mark. You know, it, it, Easter is very different from Christmas. You know, we have Christmas Eve and we get all excited about what's coming on Christmas Day. And we maybe have family and friends together. We worship at church on Christmas Eve. And then we have Christmas Day where we celebrate Christ's birth and we, we give friends to our, our fam, uh, presents to our friends and our family members. And so it's a, we lead up to this big, exciting moment. Easter is not like that. We don't have an Easter Eve. 
Instead, there's a day in between Jesus' death and his resurrection where nothing happens. Nothing happens. Now that's important. And what that reminds us of is that God doesn't always do everything in a hurry. God takes his time. Oftentimes, uh, God doesn't just snap his fingers and say, boom, here it is. Instead, uh, God works sometimes very, very slowly. Now, that's not the way we live, is it? I mean, we can go and pull a pizza out of our freezer, throw it in the microwave, and we can be eating a meal in a matter of minutes. You can pick up your phone, your computer, your tablet, and in just a few seconds, you can be tuned in to your favorite TV show or a movie that you like to watch. And then if you've ever traveled with your parents, either by car or by plane, you know that you can get in one of those, uh, get in a car or get in a plane, and you can be some way far, far away from your home in a matter of hours. Doesn't take long. Easter's not like that. Uh, Jesus died on Friday, and then there's this time in between where we have to wait. And that's the important lesson for us is that sometimes God's work is slow. God doesn't do everything according to our schedule or on our timetable. Sometimes we have to wait. And one of the best gifts uh, that we can give God and one of the best gifts we can give ourselves is to give God time. It's to learn how to wait between the struggles that are often marked on Good Friday and the joy that comes on Easter Sunday. We have to learn to give God time. God is not always in a hurry to accomplish His purpose. Well, that's it for today. I hope this has been helpful to you. Just a reminder, there will be no children's lesson next week. Uh, Miss Jenny and I are going to take a bit of a, a holiday. We're going to have some days out of town. So I'll pick this up uh, two weeks from today. So in the meantime, I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful Easter celebration. Again, I'm really glad that you could join me. Take care of yourself. and God bless. Bye-bye.